live on YouTube, members. Good evening, all. Good evening, councillors, and welcome to this extraordinary meeting of the council. Please note this meeting is live streamed to the internet. Please could all members ensure their microphone is set to mute unless they are speaking to reduce any background noise. It is important to remember that you may only speak when called by the chairman. Also, ensure any other devices nearby are switched to silent mode as they can be distracting. Members should use the raised hand button when they wish to speak. When it is your turn to speak, I will call your name and invite you to speak. Once you've spoken, I will flatten your hand. If during the vote there are technical problems, the committee services officer will contact the relevant member so that they are able to give their vote over the phone, which will be on the loudspeaker so that other members can hear. If any member loses connection during this meeting, then the meeting will be paused for a period of up to three minutes in order to give the relevant member the opportunity to rejoin the meeting. It is recommended to councillors that should they struggle to rejoin the meeting online, that they rejoin the meeting via the telephone number given in order to assist with the smooth commencement of the meeting. Thank you. All right, can I invite Father Alex Saba? to uh, read the prayers, please. The theme for the prayers I'm reading for you this evening is uh, praise and wisdom. Praise God in the holy place. Uh, praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his powerful deeds. Praise him surpassing greatness. Oh, praise him with sound of trumpets. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Oh, praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with a clashing of cymbals. Let everything that breathes and lives give praise to the Lord. Oh, light of the world. Infinite God, Father of eternity, giver of wisdom and knowledge, and ineffable dispenser of every spiritual grace, who knows uh, all the things uh, before they are made, who makes uh, the darkness and the light, put forth uh, your hand and teach us. Start, uh, our our mouth and make them as a sharp sword to utter eloquently your words. Make uh, our tongue, O oh Lord, a chosen arrow to declare faithfully your wonders. Put your spirit, O oh Lord, in us that our heart may be ready to welcome you and to praise you. Do your lovely and merciful, clemently and gently inspiration inspire us 
with uh, your grace. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father Alex. You're welcome. Um, are there any apologies for absence? Evening councillors, there are no apologies this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? No? Okay. All right. Move on to the chairman's communications. On the 8th of November, Remembrance Sunday, David, along with myself as vice chairman of Step Short, were at last able to arrange a short handover ceremony of the Step Short Arch to the leader of Folkestone and Hyde District Council, Councillor David Monk. The ceremony, ceremony consisted of a welcome by myself with a formal mention on keeping a safe distance from each other during the ceremony, adhering to strict government guidelines. A register of those attending was taken and will be kept for 21 days as instructed. Damien Collins gave a short speech and then presenting Councillor David Monk with the gifts from Step Short, which consisted of the spade, which was used by our patron Lord Boyce, Lord Warden of the Sink Ports, to dig the first turf for the arch on the 4th of August, 2013, exactly one year before the 100th anniversary of World War I in 2014. Also, there was a 3D commemorative plaque depicting soldiers on the Road of Remembrance, which included a small replica of the plaque which Prince Henry of Wales, known to us as Prince Harry, unveiled at the centenary ceremony. A short service of remembrance followed with prayers. The song Band of Brothers was sung, a piper played the lament, Flowers of the Forest, then two minutes silence. Wreaths were laid and the Kahima address was said by the Royal British Legion veteran. On the 11th of November at 11 o'clock, I attended the Machine Gun Memorial in the Cheriton Road Cemetery and laid a wreath on behalf of the Folkestone Hyde District Council. The ceremony was well supported, once again with government guidelines, and as before, a record of attendees were taken. Once again, I would like to thank all the officers and staff keeping us up to date as the lockdown tightened its grip once more. Also to all the councillors and volunteers who are giving time to help man the hubs. It would be remiss of me if I didn't say a big thank you to Giles Barnard and his team for their hard work clearing leaves, more than a thousand sacks, I believe, checking on fly tipping and cleaning the graffiti in the district. Thank you, councillors. Sorry? Councillor Rolf. Councillor Rolf. Hello, yes, Chairman. I did try to raise my hand during declarations of interest. Um, just to say, I'd like to declare a DPI in agenda item nine. It does mention opportunitas and as a Chairman of the board, I do feel we have do have a dispensation to participate, but I do feel it uh, appropriate to declare an interest regarding that, and I'd recommend that other directors do the same. Thank you, Councillor. Any other interests? Happy to do this. Yes, Chairman. Um, as Councillor Rolf has said. Um, can you declare the same interest for me that Councillor Rolf has given? Right, thank you. Chairman, um, same for me, though I'm not Chair of the Board of Opportunities. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Is that it? Yeah. Right. 
There are no petitions. So we move on to the uh, announcement of the leader of the council. Councillor David Monk, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good evening to you all. Uh, there has been much conjecture as to which tier we will find ourselves in when we come out of lockdown. I do not support the view held by some Kent leaders that we should all be in the same tier, uh, probably tier three, as Thanet and Swale in particular are suffering extremely high incidences of infection. I have argued that Kent is so large, it is not sensible to include us all in the same tier. However, we will find out tomorrow. I must say that our residents have been very good at sticking to the rules, hands, face, space. And whatever tier we find ourselves in, I assure that we will continue to be as sensible. Our district-wide community hub model continues to support those more vulnerable residents during this difficult period. And I would like to thank the host organisations, Age Concern UK in Hyde, Three Hills Leisure Centre in Folkestone, and New Romney Day Centre, along with the respective hub leaders, Cleo Smith, Nick Shaw, and John Wilson, for their efforts, which have been made the hub model such a great success. There have also been over 600 volunteers to date involved with the hubs, without whom this response would not have been possible. And my thank goes to each and every one of them for them committing to help their communities. Thank you on that. Um, thank you, Councillor. No, I, I haven't finished, no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm delighted that in partnership with the council, the hubs will continue to provide support for uh, the coming winter months. And we recently contacted over 5,000 residents by posting out over 3,000 letters and sending nearly 2,000 emails to ensure that they are aware of the help available to them. This includes help to overcome loneliness and isolation. Befriending calls, signposting to services for food deliveries and food banks, collecting shopping and prescriptions. The hubs also have been carrying out projects as a result of winning funding from Sport England funding to help get people active in their homes through exercise booklets as well as socially distanced exercise sessions. So you can see that the hub model has a wider reach than just as a response to the pandemic. Uh, could I ask, uh, could, I ask uh, could I ask those of you that haven't replied to the uh, I think some uh, councillor must have their microphone on. Uh, could I ask those of you that haven't replied to the ITV survey to please do so, as it is imperative that in this virtual age we have kit that is fit to purpose. Thank you for that. As this is the last full council meeting before Christmas, I will wish everybody a happy and healthy Christmas. The council offices will remain closed over the Christmas period, although our COVID-19 helpline remains available on 01303 76 116. For other out of hours emergency support, the council can be contacted on 01303 221888. Those numbers will be available for members if they want them. Uh, and now I move that the council accepts my report. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McConville, did you wish to reply? Happy to, oh, happy to second, Chairman, first. All right, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Madam you. Chair. Thank you. So, uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Leader. Uh, while I also share the same trepidation that we will be placed into a higher tier than we might otherwise deserve, uh, based on our own figures, I will say that this pandemic will not be defeated in isolation. We must support our neighbours who have more serious health demands than we do, as I'm sure we would welcome such solidarity if the tables are turned. And from what we have seen over the past few weeks, those tables can turn very, very quickly. 
I think we must be united in asking our government for the support that our residents and businesses need to come out of this situation on the other side. The current measures being offered are far less than was available in the spring. And I think without a change of attitude from Westminster, many local businesses will not survive a prolonged tier three closure in our area. However, on the success of the hubs, I could not commend them enough for the many residents they have served throughout the year. As I've been involved with the Folkestone hub since its inception, I can say that it is an absolutely valuable service. I look forward to seeing how we can take the model into a more long-term sustainable program that can act as a hub for coordinating our many services and partners to ensure our residents will always have someone at the end of a phone to go to in times of need. And I will also wish everyone a very merry and safe Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Monk, did you wish to reply? Uh, only to endorse that, yes, I believe in, uh, in neighbourly support. Um, thank you. Thank you. Is that report agreed? Agreed. 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 Yeah. Can you hear me, councillors? I can now. Yeah. Yep. Yes, now. Councillor Martin, um, are you having technical problems? Yes, but I think I've just solved it. Oh, have you? Are we going to? We were going to pause for you for a moment, but thank you're you. all right, are you? Thank you. It's just I've just managed to solve it. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Right. We move on then to uh, opposition business. Councillor McConville, would you like to uh, lead on that one, please, for the Labour group? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, um, obviously, in this, uh, in this sort of uh, troubling time that we, that we find ourselves in, I think one of the most uh, important things um, that we can support is people's mental health. Um, so that's why I brought this... Um, well, I, I believe sort of quite quite simple business uh, today. So it's uh, it revolves around uh, an organisation called the Mental Health Challenge. So which is a scheme set up by a number of mental health organisations uh, in the hope that it can draw in local councils to work together to support both them and and those organisations involved with it. Uh, so far, uh, 134 councils are registered with uh, this Mental Health Challenge. Um, all from all uh, parts of the UK, um, everywhere from sort of uh, districts, boroughs, parishes, counties. Um, we have uh, Councillor Diane Marsh, who is the champion for KCC, uh, but as yet there are no um, individual champions from the, from the various councils within Kent, which I hope uh, will change maybe uh, with uh, your support this evening. So um, it's quite simple. We would um, obviously uh, have uh, a champion in terms of a councillor and a lead officer. Uh, and those uh, champions can gain access to uh, support through, uh, through, through the national partners that support the scheme uh, and get access to resources, updates, take part in workshops that get organised. Um, the partners include the Association of Mental Health Providers, uh, the Centre for Mental Health, the Mental Health Foundation, MIND, uh, the National Survivor User Network, Rethink Mental Illness, the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and Young Minds. And um, the Chief Executive of the Association of Mental Health, uh, Kathy Roberts, says the association is proud to have set up and be a partner of the Mental Health Challenge Initiative. And we believe champions can work with the voluntary and community sector in championing positive mental health locally and make a difference in their communities, which I think sort of sums up what we would, uh, what we would like to do. Um, so I, I believe uh, in sort of signing up to this, um, into, into this program, the council, will, it will give us an additional platform to promote mental health and well-being uh, in our community. We, we, have a, we have a mental health and wellbeing section on our website, 
So uh, in terms of the information that's on there, we could add to that with uh, notification of being members of this challenge, having links to all the organizations that are a part of that. And we can just, it can just help us give, provide more information to residents who will need it. Uh, we can obviously provide links, um, you know, for all the other, all the organizations. So I don't think we can ever give enough information to, to our residents in how they can access mental health support. Uh, and I believe it will also provide a boost to our own lo local charities, showing that we, you know, we're, we're committed to uh, supporting mental health. And I think it will show to our residents, you know, uh, an, an overwhelming number of residents who uh, will be suffering from some form of mental health at this desperate time, that we recognise their uh, their uh, their their need for access to mental health, and that we support that. So I would hope you would support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McConville. Have you a second? Uh, and I'll, I was just happy going to, to say second chair. I would just say that I'm. Uh, is, it is for option B. Option B. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Have you got a second for option B? Happy to second chair. With that, who was that? Uh, Councillor Mead. Oh, thank you, Councillor. I, I couldn't see you. Um, thank you. So we'll open it up now for. Um, Debate. Is there anybody wishing to speak? Councillor Hollingsby. Thank, thank you. I have raised my hand. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much to um, Councillor McConville for bringing this to, to our attention. How, however, um, let me just put my video on. Sorry. However, um, I think it, it would be it would be un unrealistic of me not to point out the number of things that we currently do for mental health and I think before we make a commitment to to um, appoint a, a, a champion counsellor and a lead officer we just need to reflect on the services that we are currently offering and the work that we are currently doing I've got no uh, I think going to scrutiny to consider it would be the sensible thing to do but I just wanted to say um, I, I believe I mean we've had a CS partnership community safety partnership meeting today with a range of partners and mental health is always at the top of the agenda we had a very good presentation again from safe haven and i would like to have conversations with all these agencies that we are working with that the csu is working with that the council overall is working with before we make a commitment to to uh, another organization um, for instance the council has a range of uh, mental health providers already engaging with council staff and councillors. Uh, the CSU, as you know, meets weekly and access to um, mental health issues are addressed and people are, um, can their, their concerns can be acted on very quickly. Mental health is a key priority of both the CSP and the local children's partnership work. Uh, I've mentioned Safe Haven, uh, gave a very detailed com um, presentation today of the work that they undertake. So I, 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 I don't, I think Councillor McConville is right bringing it to our attention, but I do think we need to have a look at what we're actually doing, first of all, before we go somewhere else. There are a huge number of people involved in mental health locally. Maybe it's we need to... Um, coordinate that a little bit more and make sure that all our services are are aware of what's going on and I do think that's often a problem. CSP delivered a mental health conference last year there's plans to do something very similar again as soon as we're able to probably um, remotely. Um, it, uh, mental health training and first aid training and safeguarding training for staff is part can be um, arranged and and is is available to staff. So I think let let's actually have a look. Let uh, the overview and scrutiny have a look at what we're already doing, and see if there is a requirement to take this to another stage. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor Hills. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor McConville for actually bringing this to our attention. 
I, I served at KCC on the Loneliness and Social Isolation Select Committee. And I went around to a few centres which are doing with mental health, particularly for older men, um, which aren't always that well publicised. And I think it is a big, big problem. And with COVID, it's going to be even a bigger problem going forward next year. So I would totally support what Councillor McConville says. And with the expertise of Councillor Hollingsby, I know she has a finger on so many pulses in this area. She does a great job. Um, I think the idea of going to uh, option B is the right one, refer the issue to a cabinet run overview and scrutiny committee so that you can actually see what observations have been taken and go forward on that basis. So thank you, Councillor McConville, and I will support that on B. Thank you, Councillor. Yes. Councillor Trillor. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say I think it's a really timely motion um, to come to Council, but I also do really appreciate um, what Councillor Hollingsby has just said. So um, I see this perhaps as a way to bring, um, you know, look at all this wonderful work that the Council is, is doing already, um, but sort of help provide it with a, with, with a focus. Um, uh, you know, with, with a, a representative member and, and officer. Um, so, yeah, I, I fully support it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rolfe. Um, thank you, Chairman. And I too um, basically thank uh, Councillor McConville for bringing this very important um, issue out uh, into the open and for public um, debate and consideration. Um, it's health services in general is a subject that's very keen and very close to my heart. I've been leading a campaign for Romney, to improve Romney Marsh um, services, health services, and working with the CCG and senior NHS um, managers for uh, well over five years. And so, and the issue of mental health um, ha has always been an issue. Um, it, you know, good mental health impacts uh, so greatly and, and, uh, poor mental health impacts physical mental health as well as the mental side. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's quite a key thing. Um, you, I would endorse what Councillor Hollingsby has said, that there is a lot that this council is currently doing. Uh, she is uh, on the, both the Community Safety Partnership and Community Safety, safety Unitship, as well as the uh, SKC, or what was the SKC, but the CCG stakeholder group. Uh, I'm the council's representative on the health and over uh, and overview and uh, scrutiny committee at KCC. Um, only yesterday, um, I received and uh, uh, as, as so did uh, Councillor Hills as a KCC member, a representation uh, from the Children and Young People's Mental Health Service. So you do have representation on some very key um bodies that are dealing with this particular area what i do think is that we're not communicating uh that involvement and that engagement as best as we can and so potentially um actually taking this issue this issue and doing an audit of what we're doing and how we're communicating it would probably be the best solution because there are representatives already out there dealing with the health, um, re relevant health bodies and, and hoping to promote that for the best, you know, for the best interests of residents across this district. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Hollingsby for the work that she is doing uh, in this area. Uh, it is a very important part. And with COVID-19, um, mental health will become a major, major issue. And at, and at another level, I'm really proactively uh, trying to promote the idea of enhanced uh, mental health provision for our frontline NHS and care workers, because I think there's going to be a major, major, and I think it's now being recognised, a major health uh, issue, mental health issue with them. They're, un they're very stressed, they're fatigued, and there's going to be a lot of PTSD um, uh, as a result of the uh, pressures they've been under this year as a result of COVID. But uh, thank you, Councillor McConville, for bringing this uh, forward. Uh, I don't know whether the, the, the detail of what you're saying is necessarily the right way. I do think the communication of what we already do would be uh, probably a, a simpler and more cost-effective, uh, not that not the health has to uh, be cost-related, but uh, a possibly a more efficient way of uh, dealing with uh, and getting what you want to achieve uh, across for the benefit of all residents. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mead. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to add, yes, the council are doing wonderful work, but I think we need to do more and we can do more, which is why I'm supporting this. Um, COVID and uh, lockdown has affected so many people in so many different ways and people need to know where they can reach out. Uh, tomorrow is National Carers Day. In my ward alone, we have 20% of people who are either unpaid at home carers or vulnerable and they don't know where to reach out to. And this is to do with the communication. Again, I know the council are doing a lot, but what I believe this will do is give us yet another string to our bow to actually help those people. And I know young carers is a particular interest um, of our chair. I do remember Councillor Berry. Um, so I would urge you to please um, say yes to actually bring this in. I think it's incredibly important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor McConville, do you want to reply to all of that? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Very happy to. Um, well, you know, I appreciate, you know, everything that Councillor Hollingsby said. And, you know, this is in no way to, uh, to, to sort of say that we don't do uh, a, 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 an incredible uh, amount of work already on mental health. Again, I just think it could be something that we could use to uh, bolster, you know, our, our profile in terms of mental health, both locally, nationally, um, give us access to, uh, you know, uh, additional resources. I mean, there, there've, there've been loads of resources that this organization has done to do with COVID, for example, you know, that we, that we could be sharing through our Facebook feeds and, and websites and so on and so forth. So um, again, like I say, just another, another part of what we do um, to, to, to promote the, the good work that we already do and maybe be a bit of a catalyst to, uh, to, 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 to pushing the work that we do forward. Um, and uh, so, but yes, uh, very happy, obviously, for it to, to go for further discussion. And I would welcome, um, you know, if that discussion involved taking a deeper look at, uh, at, at what we're already doing and how we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. OK, um, should we go to the vote now for ease of voting? Um, are councillors happy that we go for the roll call? I know usually you need five people to agree to that, but are Councillor happy? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can we just um, note that we're voting on B? Yep. Okay. And Councillor Mrs. Berry. Four. Councillor Brook. Four. Councillor Ms. Carey. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Davison. Councillor Davison. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Fuller. Oh, sorry. Councillor Gay. Four. Councillor Goddard. Four. unanimous councillors thank you very much we move on now to item seven motions on notice 
The following motions have been placed on the agenda in order received. Up to 60 minutes shall be allowed for debates on motions on notice. And the first one is from Councillor Miss Susan Carey, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd, I'd like to propose this motion and I believe I have a seconder. Yes, I would, like to, I would like to second that motion of Councillor Kerry. Thank you. Councillor Hill, thank you. So, if, if I may speak, Madam Chairman. Sure, thank you. I was very interested to, to listen to the contributions from um, uh, councillors to the previous item, and uh, it was good to, to hear about all the good work that was going on and to see the agreement there is around that. And I hope similarly we can acknowledge the good work that's um, been going on for some considerable time at this council and continues. So this, this motion is intended to be supportive of that work and encouraging and um, suggesting some uh, uh, actions that the council may wish to consider. And I've been very careful with the language not to tie people's hands because I do understand that things have to be weighed up against each other and there are budget considerations. So um, I hope it's accepted in the spirit in which it's made, which is a contribution to the debate and to the direction of travel of uh, the council as it um, proceeds on its route to net zero. Um, in particular, I wanted to say something about Otterpool Park because I do think I, I've heard just about everyone who's joined the council talk about the need for affordable homes for local people. Well, one of the ways that we can get affordable homes for local people will be our development at Otterpool Park, which we now are the complete landowner of. So the project's entirely within our control. And it's not enough just to have a home that you can afford to live in. It's important that people have a home they can afford to run cheaply so they need access to to energy that's affordable and clean and they need a good environment so i'd really love to see us um, do as much as we can on Otterpool park and i know we've committed to uh to the in to have 125 percent on the the biodiversity so an increase of 25 percent that is um, sorry, 20%, but I'm, I'm suggesting we go to a further 5% on that because I've heard that there's somewhere that's uh, uh, aiming for that. And I think we should be uh, leading on that and uh, it should be possible at a site, the size and the place where it is for us to, um, to provide the sort of green spaces and blue spaces that join up and improve biodiversity. So I think that's really important. Uh, there are lots of things we can do that won't necessarily cost us money. They are things about changing our policies, our practices, and, and always asking the question when we renew things, uh, if we could take on board the needs, say, of pollinators, the um, um, opportunity for multiple benefits of um, green green investment and it's not just about planting trees there's a lot of um, important grassland habitat that can actually be considerably more biodiverse than a forest so we've got to be careful not to lose that sort of habitat in the rush to uh, to plant things it's got to be done in a considered manner so there are initiatives that can be taken wildlife corridors Tiny Forests is, a, is um, an initiative I've seen elsewhere, which I think has got great potential. Pocket parks, places that provide amenity for our residents, as well as helping us with our environmental goals. Um, I also wanted to bring in something about um, recycling and waste because um, it is part of the overall picture. And since I um, submitted that motion, I've uh, seen the latest figures for our district and unfortunately they show an increase in the average weight of waste collected per household and a reduction in recycling rates. And I think it underlines the need for us always to be striving to improve this. Um, we will not get those rates 
the, the rates down on the weight per household, nor the recycling rates up unless we actually do more. And I know the new contract that has, that has been entered in is looking to, to do better in this area. So um, that's the basis that this motion has been submitted for debate tonight. And I hope uh, councillors will, um, will contribute to a debate on it. Thank you, councillor. Okay. Uh, now let's have a look. We're open to be to debate, councillors. If anyone wishes to speak, councillor Leslie Wildbrow, please. Thank you. Yes, I, I would actually like to propose an amendment. I, mean, I appreciate that these. Um, to, you know the suggestions were done in, in the best of faith but I just want to really propose an amendment just to make sure that they can, they're properly considered. So my amendment is that these suggestions be referred to the next meeting of the climate and ecological emergency working group so that, that working group can consider them and make recommendations to cabinet. Uh, I'd like to speak on that in a minute please. Have you got a seconder? Have it a second, Chair. Sure. Okay, thank you councillor. Okay. I'd like to reserve my right to speak as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Councillor Leslie Wybrow, did you wish to speak on that now? Yes, I do. Yes. So, I'd like to thank Councillor Miss Carey for sharing her benefit at KCC with us, her benefit of experience at KCC, and for her suggestions. Um, we've actually thought about a lot of those and included a lot of them in the draft carbon action plan and, and that's due to go to cabinet in January which is why I'm proposing this amendment because I think really the only chance we've got to, to actually assess them properly is, is to go through the working group in December and I, and I really don't want to hold this up any longer by delaying it going to cabinet. Um, I'm also grateful to Councillor Carey for giving me this opportunity to explain what we've been doing a bit because I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that we've been doing a lot of work in the background and there hasn't really been the opportunity to explain all that to, to all the members. Um, we are planning an all-member briefing in January to, um, to try and put that right, but this gives me a chance to give you a quick outline of what we've been doing. Um, I think it's important to remember that all the efforts that we're doing to, to combat climate change are not, are not just based on the Carbon Action Plan. It will cut across all the Council's activities. Um, but the, the Carbon Action Plan itself is focused on the Council's own footprint, i.e. on its own estate. Um, rather than the district as a whole, although looking at the district as a whole is something we will be doing, but only, we only really have the power to influence that rather than to control that. Um, the first stage of producing the action plan was to determine the baseline greenhouse gas emissions for our own estate. Um, so that meant we had to define what the estate is. And that's really important because we needed to make sure there was no double counting with other organisations that we work with and also to ensure that we only include the emissions that we can control ourselves. And once we'd worked out what those baseline emissions were, we could work out the main sources of those. And we're now in the position that we're waiting for our consultants laser to come back with an options appraisal of, of how we might use that, that evidence to cut our carbon emissions. Um, that those options may well include investing in renewable energy in the district and also maybe retrofitting our communally heated central heating blocks. But um, I am very aware that we can't make any decisions about our housing stock until we've got the results of the stock survey that's been carried out since the housing has been brought back in from East Kent Housing. If we're to get the best value from our climate change budget, both financially and in terms of carbon emission, it is really important that we do base all our decisions on evidence. Uh, we did discuss the Kent and Medway energy and low emission strategy at the last meeting of the working group, and the group was broadly happy with that. We did ask the officers to go through it in more detail before we could recommend that council adopts it. And that's work is ongoing, so that's something else that we will be considering at the meeting in December. Uh, the carbon action plan, or the draft carbon action plan, already refers to the Kent B plan, and I can't see any reason why the biodiversity strategy shouldn't be included as well. Um, I'm very keen to include the recycling uh, rates of the district. The draft plan does talk about recycling of the council's own waste, but as I said before, it does only relate to the council's own estate. But the draft corporate plan, which is out for consultation, includes a commitment to encourage not just recycling, but reducing rethinking and reuse. Uh, and I would definitely welcome a reduction in fly tipping, but this is outside the scope of our climate change work. Uh, I really like the idea of a climate change risk assessment um, that would pr probably be part of the work for the wider community rather than on our own action plan. And it all, the action plan already 
or the draft plan already includes a commitment to do more work on adaptation over the next 12 months. Uh, I would more than welcome a policy requiring a 20% biodiversity net gain for development in the district. Um, under the current planning rules, we're not able to specify a target, I don't think, but the Environment Bill currently going through Parliament would allow local authorities to require a 10% net gain with possibility of a higher target if we can justify it, so that's certainly something we should look at. Obviously, protecting green open spaces and our wildlife is something very close to my heart, and I'm really pleased that the officers are working on a green infrastructure strategy. I totally agree that new housing should be built to be carbon neutral from the outset. But again, our ability to force developers to meet standards higher than that required by national policy is restricted. And um, the government is looking at that. And I think it's likely that higher standards will be introduced via building regulations. But having said that, I totally agree with Councillor Carey that there's no reason why we shouldn't be setting ourselves higher targets at Otterpool. And it's something my group is pushing very hard, in particular to make sure that the housing is truly zero carbon, as well as reducing the reliance on privately owned cars up there. But due to the scale and complexity of the project, Otterpool will be considered separately from the Carbon Action Plan. So as I said before, the Carbon Action Plan is due to put to Cabinet in January. Uh, so this is really the only opportunity to assess the ideas in this motion will be at the December meeting of the Climate and Ecological Emergency Working Group meeting. So I really hope that you will support this amendment, um, which you know, is totally supportive of Councillor Carer's suggestions, but just making sure that we've got a proper mechanism, mechanism for assessing them. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Trelaw, I think, wanted to come in, didn't you, Councillor Trelaw? Um, I'll, I'll reserve my right to speak until a bit later on, if other right. councillors want to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Carey, was it? Yes. Councillor mm -hmm. Carey? You're on mute. Sorry, struggling with the technology. I, uh, as a point of order, I'm quite happy to accept that amendment if, um, and I hope my seconder would be as well. And therefore it becomes the substantive motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm quite happy to accept that as well. And the important thing is to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Thank you, Councillor Kerry. Thank you. Okay, so should we go back to Councillor Trelaw? And I'm, I'm happy to sort of to move on, but just to, to sort of recap on, on, well, on what Leslie was saying and that's why I'm supporting the amendment. Um, it, it really is just um, to acknowledge that a lot of these points are, are being looked at. Um, you know, there are some other technical um, things that I was particularly interested in as well, such as using um, the Climate Change Committee's methodology and mapping that um, uh, for the risk assessment and mapping that on to a district level. Um, I've seen KCC has used elements of that methodology. Um, but again, that's just one of those technical things that I just think needs uh, better scrutiny um, and uh, just deciding on whether that is in fact appropriate methodology for, for the district. Um, I, I do want to make a point about um, I guess about Otterpool and, and perhaps, um, uh, well, my, I just want to make my personal feeling um, clear that, um, you know, if you, even if you're talking about a 25% um, net gain in biodiversity, that's coming from a, um, uh, your baseline point there is a monoculture field and a racetrack. Um, and I'd just like to remind councillors that we've seen a 75% decrease in, um, in, in insect populations over the past 25 years. And uh, so I would be reluctant um, to, to setting in stone any um, biodiversity target, or at least one that isn't way more ambitious. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with, with, with that. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, councillor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? No. Okay. So, um, Councillor Kerry, did you want to sum up quickly, or should we go to the vote? Oh, I, uh, yes. I would like to respond to what's been said. Um, yeah, I, I think it's totally appropriate that uh, this district, and I'm here as a district councillor, uh, looks at um, how it does things, and not everyone has to follow the the same pattern. Uh, these um, the motion sets out things that um, I think would be good to evaluate and I quite accept that um, the right place would be the, the committee that deals with this. 
Um, I do want to respond in particular on Otterball because uh, it's not just monocultural um, agricultural land up there and an, an old race course. Uh, it's, um, there's some ancient woodland there. There are lots of, um, uh, there's um, a river, there are um, ponds, there, there's considerable amount that's already there. But I think the, the, the thing that really excites me and I hope everyone else is the chance to actually do this so well that it becomes a model and an aspiration for other people who are trying to create communities and uh, uh, somewhere that's um, not just affordable to live but pleasant to live and uh, is an environment that uh, allows us to live with nature and that we're not seen as something inimical to it, that we live with it. And it's something we can all be proud of. So I'm, I'm very happy um, to, uh, to accept, as I've said, to accept the amendment and I look forward to seeing the action plan next year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Martin, I think your hand up was a bit late uh, as Councillor Carey has uh, summed up. So we will now go to the vote on Councillor Carey's um, motion. Councillor Mrs. Berry. Four. Councillor Brooke. Four. Councillor Mr. Perry. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Davison. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Gain. Four. Councillor Goddard. Four. Councillor Godfrey. Four. Councillor Hills. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hollingsby? Four. Councillor Keane? Four. Councillor Jay Martin? Four. Martin. Councillor P. Martin? Four. Councillor McConville? Four. Councillor Mead? Four. Councillor Mayers? Four. Councillor Monk? Four. Councillor Mard? Four. Councillor Peel? Four. Councillor Crater? Four. Councillor Crater? Four. Councillor Shoe? Four. Councillor Shoe? Four. Councillor Trudor? Four. Councillor Wade? Four. Councillor Wybrow? Four. Councillor Wimble? Four. Councillor Wing? Four. Councillor Wade? 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 Unanimous, Chair. That's unanimous again, councillors. Thank you very much. Right, we move on now um, to the second um, motion from uh, Councillor Jenny Hollingsby and not Councillor Susan Carey, as stated. It's Councillor Jenny Hollingsby. Sorry about that, councillors. Councillor Hollingsby? Yes, thank you very much indeed, Chairman. And um... Thank you for allowing me to put this motion. It's, it's actually a very simple motion. Um, the street naming policy at the moment doesn't allow any um, local um, consultation with uh, our, our representatives. And although that's not caused issues in the past, just recently we have had one or two issues where it seems to, seems to me that um, our policy needs looking at refreshing. We're not asking for a complete revival of the policy, but we're asking for it to be looked at and made a little bit more flexible in terms of uh, local influence. Um, so, uh, and if I could give you a, a, an a couple of examples, really. Um, in um, Stellin Minnis, we had a development, um, 15 houses next to or adjacent to the Rose and Crown pub. One side of the pub was called Crown Lane. It goes nowhere. It's Crown Lane. The other side is where the development is taking place. And the developer and local residents and the parish council were very keen that this road, that actually also leads nowhere, be called Rose Lane. Well, under the policy, the word lane means 
it, 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 it's a through road. So under the policy, we were not allowed to use the words Rose Lane. And it was suggested that it was the roses. Now, you know, what does that conjure up? Quality Street, all sorts of things. Um, and the local residents and the parish council were absolutely against this. And we, and, but there is no method really of appealing. I hopefully common sense is going to prevail. And I, well, I think um, Council Appeal, who is the um, portfolio holder, I, 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 I believe that he is, is considering this and I'm hoping, and we are hoping that he will come up positive and that um, we will be able to call this or the developer will be able to call this Rose Lane. Uh, I'd like to give you perhaps another example. Uh, um, in Selinge, the Taylor Wimpy site, the first phase, um, all of a sudden we had a number of uh, names for streets and close from Swan Lake. Now, I'm not quite sure because we've got a, a lane, our lane in Selinge is called Swan Lane. It seems to me the developer or whoever came up with a number of um, characters from Swan Lake and, and we just discovered that they were there. So with the second phase, we've asked that or local residents have put forward a number of suggestions. Now, I don't know where that's gone to, but I think if we could review the policy and allow a little bit more flexibility in terms of consulting local people uh, and perhaps even looking at some of the history. And I think as Otterpool is coming up and we have some other big sites coming up, it's really important that local people at least have a view or be, are consulted and can make some suggestions. So what I'm asking, and I know I've got a seconder, what I'm asking is that councillors will support the re, um, review of street naming policy. Thank you. Uh, I have a seconder, I think. Have you a seconder? Thank you, uh, Councillor Hollingsby. Yeah, yeah, happy to second um, as, as we submitted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, so uh, Councillor Gain, you wish to speak? Where's he gone? Again, who wishes to speak? Madam Chairman, may I second whilst we're waiting for Councillor Gain, who's obviously got technical problems? Yes, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, um, I'm really pleased that uh, Councillor Hollingsby um, wanted to bring this to to full council because we we were astonished to find um how inflexible the policy that we have uh, adopted um, sorry councillor, can we just pause for a moment just pause for a moment please we're still searching for council again sorry councillor Disappeared off screen, eh?
um, evening councillors, uh, just to let you know that we have managed to um, get in touch with Councillor Gain by phone and he is seeking to join us by phone. So if you can just bear with us for a moment, please. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Hello? No, Councillor. <laughs> yes. Please start the meeting now, Councillor Gain has joined us. Not on. Now I can hear you. Hello, Councillor Gain. We can hear you. Oh, I can't hear anything. I think we're waiting for you to speak, Councillor Gain. You were due to speak. All oh, right. Uh, yes. Um, I was going to say that I'm totally in agreement with uh, what Councillor Hollinsby said. We had a road named here that no discussion with anybody on an old dairy site and they named it Milky Way which none of us would have particularly agreed with Is that it council again? Yeah that's it I think I'm just getting in on Zoom now <laughs> I'm back I'm back <laughs> Thank you councillor councillor Mrs Carey would you want to uh, continue Thank you. I think that was uh, an intervention well worth waiting for. <laughs> um, um, it's obviously the case that somebody who builds uh, a new road, it's their money, it's their development. They want it to be attractively named. It's part of their marketing strategy. And, you know, it would be like having a child and somebody coming along and telling you, what you could or couldn't call them. But in the case of Stelling Minnis, it was everyone. It was the developer, it was the parish council, it was the district councillors, it was the county councillor. Uh, all of us wanted Rose Lane, but um, we weren't allowed to have it for some reason. And the reason was that a lane has to be somewhere that goes through, even though it had the matching one at Crown Lane that doesn't go anywhere. So that that led us down this, this um, rabbit hole of, uh, well, what is the policy? And um, we both of us looked more carefully. And one of the officers sent me, um, uh, well, he, he didn't send me a link. He told me that what we did had to follow the conventions and best practice for the National Land and Property Gazette here. And this document is um, 387 pages long. It's actually quite an interesting read. Uh, it says all the obvious things about the importance of consistency, not having duplication, that people need to be able to find places, uh, you need to have names that um, won't be mocked or could easily be changed into to something that um, was rude or offensive. Um, it sounds as though Milky Way shouldn't have been allowed to be got away with. Um, it, it also 
talks about the um, the risks of naming streets after somebody who's alive, which they don't recommend, or indeed somebody who's who's dead, because it may turn out that at some later stage they were some sort of villain. Um, however, it does say that um, they should be close liaison with local historic societies. And I actually think if I were a developer, I would find it really useful to have some suggestions from local people as to what would be appropriate names uh, that had local links. And, and actually I've been keeping a bit of a list of names I think would be good for Otterpool Park when it eventually comes. And I wouldn't by any means um, insist, on, I, I can't insist on any of them, but I would want them considered as suggestions. And just as we've recently had a competition to name the old Debenham store in Folkestone that attracted over 200 entries, I think people would be interested in having some sort of in, input. And I do understand the need to, um, to make sure that um, way and close and uh, lane and street are used in an appropriate manner. But I do think we've got ourselves a bit of a straight jacket here. And um, I think it's um, been quite useful to find out the policy we have before we, we actually go ahead with some major new developments. And names are really important. And once they're there, they're really difficult to change. So I hope people will support us in wanting a review that's, um, that's supportive of what our officers are trying to do, understanding of uh, the need for um, this to be a technical document, but having somewhere in it for um, local input and the opportunity for for everyone to to be able to make a contribution to um, to giving appropriate names to the new roads in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carey. Uh, Councillor Rolf. Um, right, I'm going to say this. Um, I think that we can all accept that we all want quality streets across our district. Ooh. And well, and but one of those ways is to is to support this and encourage local people to have ownership of it by having some input into the naming, the consultation, and the way things are being developed. As I know, we'll go through with the general sort of development of Otterpool. Um, and this is a very simple uh, and effective way, I think, to actually get um, applied, you know, so cons good consultation, get some feedback and, you know, hopefully we won't have the boat naming fiasco of, uh, of recent times, but we will get some really interesting and, um, and applied input from our local residents who will be living in the areas and hopefully wanting to live in those particular roads. And if they feel they've had their own input, they'll then want to look after them. So I would actually fully endorse uh, what is being proposed. And thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you, Councillor Rolf. Anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor Davison. She's there. Can you hear me okay, Chair? Right, Councillor yeah. Davison. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'm actually just quite confused by the motion, actually, because um, in what I've looked at in terms of the, the policy document, it, there does seem to be uh, opportunity for consultation um, with residents. And as far as I can see, there wouldn't be anything to prevent developers doing that in any case. Um, and the reference to lanes that I can see says lanes have to be residential roads. There's no, there's not a reference to it not being a no through road. And, and I'm not clear from the motion what changes, specific changes are being sought. Okay, thank you, Councillor Davison. Councillor Mullard. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, it Two aspects here. I'm quite supportive of the motion, um, but we mustn't run away with the get fixated on the word lane. 
we have crescents, crosses, parades, avenues, um, circuses, ways. There are a whole load of them, all meaning slightly different. I think we can all understand what a close is. That's pretty straightforward. It, the word in itself says close. Um, that's one aspect. The other thing is the actual name. So on, on the particular point raised, Rose Lane, um, it appears that the, that the, the, the rights or the, the policy is that you can only use the word lane for um, through roads. The word rose is not challenged, of course. It seems to me that residents can very easily, I know what was said about developers, but residents should have a say in the name of, of wherever they live. And um, perhaps the developers and the council and everybody else should have a, a say on whether it's a lane or a close or a way or a or a crescent or whatever. I know in my mind clearly what a crescent is. I know what a close is. So it's a little bit wider than just zeroing in on one half of the the name and what the thing is. And I would certainly um, recommend that, I, as I said, I support the, the motion. I think it needs to be thought through a little bit deeper. And I certainly would support the um, a change in the current policy to give people more idea and more thought and more involvement. Particularly when we come up to what the pool, there are going to be lanes and closes and and perhaps even parades up there. Um, that's what I wanted to say, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McConville. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, just sort of trying to sort of see what we're what we're looking to do here. I mean, um, I obviously read through the policy when when I saw the motion. Um, I mean, it still obviously refers to, to to Shepway District Council, so there's possibly uh, you know there's 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 a need to sort of change some things there, perhaps. But I mean, it, it says that Shepway District Council is licensed under the Public Sector Mapping Agreement which entitles use of Ordnance Survey and National Land Property Gazetta, NLPG, and that this policy is written in accordance with best practice for maintaining the NLPG using the Data Entry Conventions Reference Manual. Uh, you know, I don't really understand what that means, but it, what, I, what, it, what it sort of makes me think is um, how much scope we have for, for changing such a, these, these sorts of policies uh, within, you know, a, a, a national framework. Um, but of course, uh, you know, I, be very interested to sort of see what um, you know what 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 officers have to say in in terms of this, and I'm I'm all for um, you know looking at uh, looking at our policies, um, you know. So I, I would welcome uh, the discussions in the future on this with maybe a little bit more uh, guidance from uh, people more in the know than me. Um, but uh, I think um, a large part of the discussion has obviously been based. Uh, towards uh, Otterpool Park, and um, I wouldn't want to uh, support uh, something that's looking to, to to change road names for a development that you know is yet to even come before a planning committee. So, while I'm supportive of the idea, uh, I, I will I will have to abstain on this. I am afraid. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McConville. Councillor Mead. Thank you, Chair. Um, couple of concerns. Number one, if this is national policy, do we have the right to then change it? Number two, this confusion about lanes, roads, crescents, etc. Each of those, each of those names actually means something um, and was put down into the, uh, the Gazette or the Gazetteer uh, for a reason. It was to tell motorists um, what sort of road they were going on. So we shouldn't maybe be looking at changing that. And consultation with um, local residents, there is nothing that I can see in the policy that actually stops either ourselves or developers actually consulting with local residents over names. Um, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm really not quite sure why we would want to change all of that when maybe it's already in there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Trelaw. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
I don't have a, a problem with this motion as such. Um, I'm just wondering uh, why we're using our valuable time to bring something like this at the moment when, when we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic and officers have all sorts of, of pressures on them. Um, uh, it, it, it seems fair enough, but um, it doesn't, doesn't seem to me to be high priority, especially when we're just sort of basing it on one one case study in the district. Um, and I also agree with the point that Councillor McConville made about, um, you know, uh, talking around Otterpool when we're sort of tabling these motions, um, when in fact the outline planning application hasn't even come to committee yet. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Philip Martin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I just want to go back to uh, when Councillor Kerry was uh, talking about the historic um, gazetteer and regulations and in particular about it was important not to duplicate. One thing that I've never ever heard brought up and I have no idea despite living in the area most of my life how we ended up in Folkestone having two roads of the same name. Can you all tell me what that is? Well I'll tell you it's Canterbury Road in Folkestone so it's important that these things because that must be so confusing. You have a Canterbury Road stretching from the bottom of Dover Road and then you have one that goes from Hill Road to, to Canterbury Road. So and it's not the same road. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Anyone else wishing to speak? No. Councillor Denny, would you like to sum up? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, thank you for the comments, councillors. And I, I just thought this was quite a simple motion that all we've asked for is the policy to be looked at and to consider um, that when roads are being named or when developers are putting names forward, that local representatives have the opportunity to comment. That's really, it's as simple as that. It's Otterpool happens to be on the end of the agenda because obviously that's a big issue coming up and to have a policy in place prior to that I think would be an excellent thing. All we're asking, all we're asking is for officers to look at the policy and just to consider whether there is enough um, influence by local people. After all, that's really what we're trying to do now. We're trying to consult more with our residents. Surely this is just what we're we're asking to do, to consult and make sure that uh, we're not saying that you, that has to be set in stone. Obviously the developer and the officers would come, um, would, would come with, up with a name that conforms to policy. If that policy could be reviewed, where local people have a bit more influence. I, th I think I, that's actually all we're asking for. Very simple request. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsby. <clears throat> right, we move to the vote now. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Mrs. Berry. Four. Councillor Brook. Councillor Brook. Four. Abstain. Councillor Martin. Abstain. Councillor Mead. Abstain. Councillor Mayers. Four. Councillor Monk. Four. Mark. Four. Neil. All work for me, so I'm abstaining. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Prater. Oh, four. <laughs> Councillor Rock. Four. Councillor Shoot. Four. Councillor Chabot. Abstain. Councillor Wade. 
Abstain. Councillor Wybrow. Abstain. Councillor Wimble. Or. Councillor Wynn. Abstain. Chairman, I make that 19 in favour and 10 abstentions. Okay, councillors, um, there's 19 for and 10 abstentions, so that's carried. Thank you. We move on now to item eight, update to the general fund medium term capital programme, pages nine to 16. And Councillor Monk, would you like to introduce, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman, I'd like to remove the report A20-03, the three recommendations on there. And uh, I would um, point out that uh, we do have a legal agreement to, uh, which will give the council protection on the money for the uh, vehicles, uh, 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 allowing us to retain a lien on them. Uh, thank you. Have you a seconder? That's me, Madam Chairman. I'm happy to second. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peel. Anyone wishing to speak? No, then we go to the vote. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Mrs. Berry. Four. Councillor Mrs. Brooke. Four. Councillor Mrs. Carey. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Four. Unanimous. Thank you, councillors. We move on now to item nine, medium term financial strategy 2021 to 2022 to 2024 to 2025, pages 17 to 42. Um, Councillor Monk, did you wish to uh, propose? Thank you, Madam Chairman. I uh, move that uh, we accept uh, report A20 uh, stroke 04 uh, the, to note and receive the report and to adopt this uh, medium term financial strategy. Thank you. Have you a seconder? Happy to second, Chairman. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak? No? You're muted, uh, Chairman. You're still muted. That's it. Councillor McConville, sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, uh, thank you. Um, 
Obviously, it's a very precarious sort of uh, situation we find ourselves in financially. And, uh, you know, as we know, we, we've, we've had uh, assistance centrally um, for this year. And, and this is obviously looking to uh, the years uh, to come. Um, but uh, as, you know, as this document relies heavily on, on uh, many other documents um, and, you know, one of the glaring figures in there is obviously the 13 million cumulative deficit for 24-25. Um, I will um, abstain on this item uh, for now uh, in the hope that uh, we get more um, substantial information and uh, a, a, a much clearer view um, in the new year uh, leading up towards uh, obviously our budget uh, meetings and uh, some more reports to come through the, uh, the financial subgroup of the overview and scrutiny committee. But uh, obviously, it's uh, it makes for very stark reading. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor Prater. Sorry, couldn't last. Um, I'd just like to I, I accept the points which Councillor McConville just made. Um, the point of the MTFS is to make it clear over the course of the next three or four years where the finances are going, and clearly we're in a really challenging financial position. And that's what the report lies out. It is challenging. Um, and if one does nothing over the course of the next three years, it is unsustainable if one took that position there. Um, but nobody is proposing to do that because there are a couple of broad reactions to that budget position as it's laid out there. Um, you could propose large wholesale cuts to frontline services to reduce the expenditure that you're going to make. Um, you could look at overly large inflation increases in fees and charges across the board. Or you could take a second position, which is not to panic. And you take the second position, which is to plan to cut the costs where you can, to try and trim expenditure where it's possible without hurting frontline services, to be very clear on what the financial position is. And that's what's useful about the medium term financial strategy is that it sets out uh, where those challenges are and to keep under review over the course of the coming months what changes. And there are going to be changes, as Councillor McConville says, things are going to change and that we will see differences in funding. I'm not saying they're all going to be good, but we're going to see changes um, as things develop. Um, so I will be voting for um, the MTFS as in front of us because it accepts that the position is difficult, but it doesn't make an... Uh, early overreaction to that position it's um and that's uh, i think to its credit so i think that the fact that what it sets out is that the challenge but doesn't overreact um accepts that there will be some difficulties there is there is difficulty in there there is potentially pain in there and we might have to take more difficult decisions later but it doesn't uh, take those decisions too early too soon um, and understands that we can deal with some pain in the short term, as, um, but that we uh, don't overreact to it. So that's why I'm going to be uh, voting for the MTFS in, uh, in front of us at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Prater. Anyone else wishing to speak? Councillor Monk, did you want to come back on that? Oh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman, as well. Um, I, 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 I like Mr. Prater, he, uh, Councillor Prater, he comes along and he explains it all for you. Um, and he's, he's absolutely right, dead on, dead on target. Uh, and what you have to remember is that this council is in the unenviable position, uh, no, the enviable position, rather, of, of being able to go in to this, this period uh, with, 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 with some faith, because we've, we've managed, uh, by using uh, medium-term financial strategies, by financial discipline, to be able to go in with some reserves behind us, which has enabled us not to panic. Um, and that is uh, the first thing you must never do. Now, when you see that figure of 13 million, it, at first sight, it is, it is um, uh, rather horrendous. And in fact, even at second and third sight, it is. But I would say that uh, I have been here before when that figure has been 15 million uh, pounds and uh, we, we've su survived it. And we survived it by uh, any, any number of things. As I say, this is a live document. 
it, it will go up and down. I, I, I think that already the, 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 the point about this is it gives that financial discipline. It gives the officers focus when it comes to setting budgets. And that focus is particularly important uh, because it really drives down and makes sure that uh, everybody knows exactly what happens if we don't uh, if we don't find these savings, and we are we are already finding savings. Live document, financial discipline. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's what has got us to the enviable state we're in today. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Monk. Councillor Wimble, um, Councillor Monk has summed up, so you're a bit late with your hand up. I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Um, anyone else um, uh, putting their hand up now is too late. Should we go to the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Mrs. Berry. Four. Councillor Brooke. Resounding four. Councillor Ms. Carey. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Davison. Abstain. And I just want to point out that Councillor Wimble did actually have his hand up before summing up so i'm sorry he's missed out on speaking councillor field four councillor again four councillor goddard four councillor godfrey four councillor hills four councillor mr collinsby four councillor king councillor king abstain Abstain. Councillor Catenius. Abstain. Councillor J. Martin. Four. Councillor P. Martin. Four. Councillor McConville. Abstain. Councillor Mead. Abstain. Councillor Mayers. Four. Councillor Monk. Four. Councillor Mullard. Four. Councillor Peel. Four. Councillor Freighter. Four. Councillor Rolfe. Four. Councillor Shoe. Four. Councillor Trelaw. Four. Councillor Wade. Four. Councillor Wybrow. Four. Councillor Wimble. Four. Councillor Wing. Four. I make that 24 in favour and five abstentions. So that's 24 in favour and five abstentions. And I'd just like to say to Councillor um, Davison, Councillor Monk had just started to speak when Councillor Wimble's hand went so I'd just like to correct you on that one, please. Thank you very much. Right, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Um, but I would just like to say the next leader's questions will be on the 16th of December and the 27th of January. So that's a note for your diary. And the next full council meeting will be on the 24th of February, 2021. As this is the last full council meeting this year, I hope everyone has a really happy and well-deserved Christmas break. Please stay safe and enjoy the time that you can have through government guidance with your families. I hope you really enjoy meeting up with them again. So thank you all very much for a, a good debate tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Chairman. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.